Hi, my name is Konstantin Baum. I'm a master of wine and today I feel like challenging myself. I'm going to do a blind tasting of three wines. That's not new, you might want to say, but there is a catch. Instead of relying on all of my senses in order to identify the wine, I will only use my eyes for the first wine, my nose for the second wine and my palate for the third wine. Will I be able to identify the wines like that? Let's find out. We have five basic human senses, touch, sight, hearing, smell and taste. But in a blind tasting, usually only four of those senses play a role as hearing isn't really a factor. However, there were studies undertaken that proved that the background music played at tastings influenced the results. So you might want to say that all senses are in play when it comes to tasting wine. Blind tastings can be really difficult and usually I combine all of the information from all of my senses in order to form my opinion on a wine. But in this experiment, I'm going to focus on one sense per wine and I'm actually going to use those black glasses for two of the wines. Leon picked those wines and I've no idea what they are. All of the wines are at the same temperature, so I won't be able to identify a red wine from a white wine just based on the temperature in my mouth. I think this is going to be really difficult and really humbling, but I at least hope that me torturing myself will be entertaining for you. So let's start. So let's start off with the first one and focus on the sense of sight. Usually people use their sight in order to identify objects like the road ahead or whether the fruit in your hand is an apple or an orange, but sight is a little bit less important in blind tastings. Everyone with good eyes can tell a white wine from a red wine. And in most cases, you can identify a sparkling wine just by looking at it. You can also see whether a wine has high levels of alcohol, whether it has been filtered or not, and whether it's old or young. Different grape varieties can produce lighter or darker colored wines. Malbec and Tanat, for example, produce really dark red wines, while Nebbiolo and Pinot Noir produce light colored red wines. Grape varieties like Pinot Gris and Gewürztraminer can actually produce white wines that have a slightly pinkish hue due to the color of their berries. So let's see whether I can identify this wine just by looking at it. In order to avoid smelling something, I'm actually going to put this huge clamp on my nose while I pour the wine, only while I pour the wine because it hurts really bad. Okay, I'm going to try keep my nose away from the glass so that I don't get influenced by the flavor of the wine. Okay, this is a very light colored wine. I don't know whether you can see that against my white jumper, but this is really, really light colored. Like I said, initially there are grape varieties that produce really dark red wines while others produce lighter red wines. So the list includes grape varieties like Pinot Noir, Nebbiolo, but also Grenache, Gamay could be included in that list as well. And there are some specialty grape varieties like Trollinger, Vernatsch. So a grape variety that is not very common, but that produces really light colored wines. People tend to say Trollinger is not a red grape variety, it's a rosé grape variety, but yeah, anyways. So I don't think that this is Nebbiolo because Nebbiolo tends to be a little bit brown towards the rim and this is kind of purple all the way. I don't think it's Grenache because Grenache tends to be a little bit darker than this. I think this is very, very light. This could be Pinot Noir, a very light Pinot, like a basic entry-level Pinot Noir from Germany or from the Alsace, for example. But I mean, this is very, very light. Not being able to smell or taste the wine makes it really difficult because if I, if I thought this was Pinot, I would taste it. And then if there was quite a lot of fresh acidity and some grippy tannins. I would go towards Pinot Noir. Well, if this would be really round and very simple without much acidity and much tannins, I would go more into the direction of Trollinger Vernatsch. But I can't. So I'm going to say this is... A Trollinger just because the color is I mean this is really light colored so so I'm going to say this is a Trollinger and this could either be from the north of Italy or it could be from Germany and if it's from Germany it's usually from Württemberg the region that has by far the biggest vineyard surface area dedicated to this grape variety so I'm just going to say this is a Trollinger from Württemberg without smelling or tasting it. Let's see whether I'm right. Okay. Oh, what the? There's nothing on the front label. Is that, that's supposed to be like that. But it says on the back label, Trollinger 
Sine Fellbacher from Württemberg. So it's a Trollinger from Württemberg. So, I, I mean, I don't even have to taste this stuff anymore. But seriously, this was actually quite easy because the list of grape varieties that are so pale, this pale, is very, very small. I'm sure I've missed some of the grape varieties. There are probably some more esoteric ones. But obviously Trollinger is something that I'm familiar with being a German living not too far away from this place too. So Leon was kind of nice to me here. I love wine, but the other beverage I really enjoy drinking is coffee. I drink coffee every day and even though I'm not a master of coffee, I do like to drink different coffees from different places and I want to drink quality coffee instead of generic, boring black brew. And that's why I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Atlas Coffee Club. Atlas Coffee Club is a subscription service that selects coffees from around the world and delivers them to your door. More than 50 countries produce coffee from Burundi to Sumatra and Atlas selects new and exciting coffees every month. You can customize your grind type, roast preferences and so on depending on how you like your coffee. As a subscriber you get coffee, a postcard and a coffee country card that gives you information on the coffee country's history, tasting notes and context about what makes the coffee special and unique. For my viewers Atlas is offering 50% off plus free shipping on your first order if you go to atlascoffeeclub.com slash master of wine. The link is in the description. That's a pretty good deal and a pretty good way to start the day. I know what I'm going to drink tomorrow morning. But now let's get back to the wines. So for the second wine, let's focus on the sense of smell. Humans are able to recognize 10,000 different aromas, but most people struggle identifying a flavor, even common flavors, by name. Sometimes I sit there thinking, what is this flavor, as my brain is not able to link it up with the right description. It is important to agitate the glass in order to release as many flavor compounds as possible so that you can make an educated guess. The smell of a wine can give you a lot of information on the ripeness level of the fruit, cellar treatments and the grape variety, but it also paints an incomplete picture. The aroma of green vegetables and chocolate in a wine might suggest early harvest of the grape and maturation in oak barrels, but those descriptors could point to Cabernet Sauvignon and Sauvignon Blanc two very different grape varieties. So without having seen the wine or tasted it, you might actually end up in the completely wrong direction. So let's find out whether this black glass will confuse me. So I actually have to restrain myself so that I don't put this wine into my mouth because that's just part of my normal routine. But it's really interesting just smelling it and not being able to see it. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure whether, I, I think, I think I can tell that this is a white wine just by looking at it. I don't know whether the glass does such a great job, but it could be a red wine. I, I don't really know. You don't see it clearly, that's for sure. So it smells of lemon zest, oranges. There's also a little bit of ripe apple character coming through and there's quite a lot of oak. So you have those flavors of vanilla and grilled bread. So, so there's quite a lot going on here. There's quite a lot of intensity in the glass. So this is a very distinct, very concentrated wine style. I would say the flavors point me towards Chardonnay, Chenin Blanc and Oak Chenin Blanc. It could also be something like White Rioja or it could be something like a White Chateau Neuf du Pape. And it could be something completely different. I think this is not an aromatic grape variety, so it's not a Sauvignon Blanc or a Riesling. But... Um, yeah, and it's definitely been handled in the cellar in a way in order to get these intense oak flavors here. It's quite a lot of aroma, quite a lot of intensity coming from the oak, but well combined with the fruit flavor. Um, this could be American oak. There could be a part of it American oak. There's quite a lot of vanilla flavor coming through. Um, it also feels like there was batonnage, so the stirring up of the lees that just gives this creaminess uh, in the nose. So it smells a little bit lactic. It smells a little bit, yeah, like like a lemon tart. So it's a nice, really complex wine. So I'm going to say this is a Chardonnay, just because this is the most obvious choice, I think. I would say this is maybe a Chardonnay from the new world due to its concentration and richness. I would put it into California. I think it might be a Sonoma Chardonnay with lots of oak, but 
well managed oak like i said there's good balance between the fruit flavor and the oak flavor let's find out okay a clear glass bottle what the it's white rioja again i think i got that wrong at some point earlier in another video where i did a blind tasting leon seems to like putting white riojas in in the tasting. So I wasn't completely wrong. I first of all mentioned white Rioja and I also said white Chateau Neuf du Pape and this is made from Ganacha Blanca and Viura. Ganacha Blanca, Grenache Blanc, grape variety used in white Chateau Neuf. But yeah, I was wrong in the end. So I'm not an expert in white Rioja to be honest, so sue me. So for wine number three, let's focus on the sense of taste, but I think we also have to talk about the sense of touch. The tongue has taste receptors that are able to detect saltiness, sweetness, bitterness, acidity, and umami, which is meatiness, basically. So those taste receptors are fairly limited in their ability, but they offer really reliable and very valuable information in order to be able to identify a wine. On top of that, our mouth is also able to feel CO2, the tannic grip of an intense red wine, and things like the alcoholic burn in the aftertaste. So you should really swish the wine around in your mouth in order to gather as much information as possible. You know, in my Master of Wine exams, I actually relied heavily on tasting the wines, especially when it comes to red wines, because they often smell fairly similar, but on the palate, things are revealed that are really important to get the wine right. While you have the wine on your palate, you often also smell something, that is because there is a passage between your nose and your palate. And in order to reduce that, I'm going to use this terrible clamp again. Ow. To make sure that I only taste the wine. So let's go. Oh, this is, this is tricky. Oh. Uh, I have to take that off. I still need my nose. So yeah, I think just tasting the wine... Is interesting because all of a sudden you're very limited in what you actually get from the wine. Usually you also have the flavor while you taste the wine. If you block that passage, don't really get even half of the enjoyment, but you get quite a bit of information. So the wine is fairly tannic. The tannins are present. They are granular. They are not the most intense tannins though. So judging from the grip of the tannins, I think it's pretty clear that this is a red wine. The acidity is present. It's not super intense. It's quite a lot of body there. I would say it has maybe 13 and a half, 14% of alcohol. So not low, more towards the high end. And yeah, I mean, the tannins are quite granular, quite intense. This doesn't feel like Pinot Noir tannins, for example. It doesn't feel like Grenache tannins. It feels more like Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah. It could also be more concentrated, Malbec, uh, something like that. So it feels kind of, yeah, kind of harsh. So as this is really difficult, I'm just going to go for the classic. I'm going to say this is a Bordeaux based on Cabernet Sauvignon. So majority Cabernet Sauvignon. And yeah, let's find out. All right. Oh, I'm so wrong. Okay, so this is a Chianti Classico. So I was completely wrong here. I mean, it's a pretty good Chianti Classico, quite a concentrated one, but based on Sangiovese, not Cabernet Sauvignon. I didn't even mention Sangiovese here. I just didn't get the, well, I mean, there was acidity there, but I thought the talents were more pronounced than what I usually expect from Sangiovese. So yeah, I failed miserably here. But I mean, this was very difficult. All right, this was quite interesting and quite humbling as well. Tasting from those glasses really helps you understand your senses better. And I think I'm going to do that more often in order to practice, just to get better at what I do. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, which sense do you rely on the most? Is it your eyes, your nose, your palate, or the sense of feel, or are you actually hearing the wine? Let me know down below. I uh, hope I see you guys again soon. Until then, stay thirsty.